Hello there, good morning and welcome to my little corner of the internet and this morning as it's Thursday it's time for Template Thursday and I've got this week's template here and as if you saw yesterday's vlog you'd know that it's a little bit different to what I'd normally do and it was inspired by somebody on the Facebook group whose name I can't now remember um, but I'll thank her for it because um, what I've got here, and I'll show you what these are in a moment, is I have a page full now of little pictures, eight of them, and they're all just, just a tiny bit smaller than an ATC card. This is an ATC card. Um, I've cut card up. And ATCs are three and a half inches by two and a half inches. Luckily, my cutter is in Imperial because the, the dimensions in centimetres or millimetres are crazy. But so each of these, you can see this will cover these up quite nicely so that if they're cut out, they'll mount onto card. The alternative is that you um, print this out on thick card or you adhere your paper completely to a sheet of card before colouring or after colouring and then cut out. I'm going to do this in a, a specific way because I I kind of have a plan because the other thing I've got isn't just ATCs um, I've got some card blanks here because I'm going to show you a way of using these to create greetings cards so I'm going to pop these out the way for now because I don't want to get them messy and mucky I've actually printed my drawing out on some quite heavy um, paper or card stock it's, it's, I think it's card it's just ordinary card crafting card um, ran it through my put it through my laser printer so all the lines here are permanent so they won't be affected by any water and I'm going to color in a couple of the templates and you've got a selection of them from botanical with zentangle patterns there's one here that's you know under the sea which is meant to go portrait. This one could go any way you want, um, but some obviously have a direction. Um, and I've done some landscapes, some portraits, some um, whatever the way you want. So there's a little landscape one here with cactus, cacti and plants and uh, mushrooms and some bunting and a, a strange bird. Um, oh, this one, buildings and arches and a funny sun and moon and some heart trees and things like that and mountains or hills or they could be rainbows okay you may not get all the rainbow colors in there but you can do you know um often if i haven't got enough lines to do a rainbow i choose to do the outside one red fading into orange the next one yellow into green and the last one blue into purple so you get the different colors of the rainbow but not in distinct bands that's how i do it Doodle Worlds, because I know an awful lot of people seem to enjoy the Doodle Worlds. Another abstract botanical, which could go any which way you like. Um, this one's one of my more abstract botanicals, and this one does have a direction. These point upwards, although you could have them pointing downwards because it's abstract. It really doesn't matter. It's whatever you feel like. Sideways would look a bit odd, but to my mind. And this last one, again, is an abstract botanical, which is again can go any which way you you like um i had no particular idea what direction i was working in in fact i think i started at the top and worked my way down because by the time i got to drawing there the paper was all over the place anyway because this is ordinary cardstock it's a i find it awkward to color on because i am used to specific art papers so i've decided to start with to try tombow markers um, I could get my Copics or my Chameleon pens out. Copics would be better because these are really quite small. And perhaps I'll pause the video and do a second one in Copics. But to help me with um, adding Tombows, I have got here my white plastic palette, which is basically a cutting sheet from some kind of die cutting machine. And I'm, use I'm going to use this to put Tombow markers down on and then I have a choice um, which doesn't include painting myself apparently look at that 
painting myself. Oh, a nightmare job or what? Yep. Yeah. That's why this is green. It's because the brown in it is crystallised out. Genius. Still, I'll work with it. So I can either use a little piece of paper here, a water brush, pick some of the colour up and use the brush, the damp brush to add the colour. And if I just add enough colour and plenty of water, I can fade the colour out. Or in theory, and I say in theory, because I haven't tried this on the paper yet, so I can pick the colour up with another pen and then as I colour, the colour fades, you know, fades from one to another. You do need to pick a fair amount of the colour up to get a big gradient, but I think I prefer that. Well, either either works for me. And I was toying with the idea of um, colouring these in distress inks and then adding colour on top. Um, and I'm tempted to do that with the ones that have got, because I hate colouring backgrounds, um, like fish with the background there that is um, you know, sea and the skies and so on. But I, there's a way I can get around this if I stop and think about it now. Um, others aren't quite so bad because the areas are smaller, so I'm happy to do those. And I didn't think about that when I did them. But this is what I'm going to do, apart from take my glasses off. I'm going to swing around and I'm going to get a... I know three will do. Okay, glasses back on so I can see what I'm doing. This is turning drawings into stained glass. Which makes me happy because then I have little sections that I can colour in and create quite an interestingly textured background. Um, no rhyme or reason it's just whatever seems to work is I'm just splitting the areas up into manageable sizes basically and when my unipin pen has dried it should be waterproof even on paper that's been through a laser printer which is always an issue because of the heat, but the laser print has been fab, but I'm, I'm still trying to justify, because it works, um, getting an inkjet printer that has, it's the Epsons I'd be looking at, um, either the Ecotank or one, they still do Durabrite ink or something similar, because Durabrite ink is actually pretty much water soluble, and um, there we go, let's do it that way. Just splitting some of these bigger areas up. So I've done it with that one. Yeah, I could have done that for you. But there's nothing to say that you can't take a pen. Two of drawings to do things like this if you wish. Oh dear, it's legs. <laughs> Look like little stars. That's the only problem you have to remember the, um, if I do get to colouring this one, I, I don't know what I'm going to do today yet, is to remember that those are knees, not stars. Oops. I'm not really thinking this through um, particularly. I'm just working it as it needs to go. And of course, I can split it up where there aren't enough of these little circular stars. I could just add more if I wanted to. But I'm not. I'm going to work with what I've put there. If you're familiar with colouring books, I use this quite often 
or I have done where there's a large expanse of background or sky, um, especially starry night skies. Because I know I dislike intensely, as I've said, large areas that need colouring. I'm doing it digitally, I don't have a problem with them. It's just traditional media vexes me so much when it comes to colouring. There, that'll do nicely. I think the others are fine because, you know, they mostly are, um, yeah, that'll do. Okie doke, so which one shall I colour? Throw my pen out the way. Let's move this over here. Um, those will need time to dry. The ones I've just done that to, ooh, hang on. Strange shape here. That's better. Yeah, I think that would need that there. Yeah, that'll work. Okie doke, so which one shall I colour? Oh, I think I might go for the, um, this one. But before I do that, let me get my paper trimmer out. Sure as eggs is eggs. I'm going to try and cut these with scissors at the moment. So all I'm going to do is just chop them into smaller sections of the page, simply because it makes it so much easier for me to work under the camera. So I thought I'd do that here so you could see really quick and easy. Which one was I going to do? I can't remember. Oh yes, that one. With the birds and the um yes that'll be quite nice i think so let me have a look i'm looking for a suitably colored that must probably do um suitably colored pens for the this is the worst thing about me and my desire to do weirdly wonderful things like this. that's a good one this one will almost probably be that's a strange colour, but it may work. This one will definitely work. With that, I think. Just pick some up. And even if it doesn't, it really is not imp that important today. I don't think I'm actually get because this pen is just about on its last legs. I don't know how it's dried out or why things are crystallised on it. I always make sure I put the um, lids on really well when I I finished with them. Tight, make sure they're tightly on. It may just be the age of them because I have had them for a few years. It's okay. And yeah, it's all one colour, but. Will be fine especially if i take a wet brush hopefully and i should be able to move some of this perhaps or perhaps not let's see let's see if it will actually it is it is doing something to it there, we'll let it dry and see what happens. It may just be that the, the wetness just takes some of that pigment deeper down into the um, water, into the water, water. Okay, I did see, that's a darker, got that one. And, oh gosh, golly gosh, this one as well is a darker. It's a darker version of the one I got in my hand, so let's pick this up. So to go dark from light, it's the hardest thing about doing this is remembering which is which.
This paper really is quite thirsty, I do have to say that. Yes. So I did with the other one, I'm just adding some water just to lighten that a little bit because it should be a lot lighter than that. Um, she's a much nicer one. That's actually, this is going to be an easier way to add colour. I can work this out already, it's just using simple colours. So I'm not used to using paper like this for um, art. But um, it works. That'd be nice. Okay, let's pick some of this up while I'm at it. What's well, a really lucky colour because I had some of that greeny colour, um, grey green, but it'll be all right. And yeah, I'm not worried too much about going over the the little bits inside because um, I've got a plan for them. If I got oh yeah, I've got that little leaf down there still to do. That'll be fine. Any more leaves? Nope. So I pop those back. Okie dokes, so I've got a lovely red here, boy that's that's a deep deep red. So I'm going to have a red and white spotty mushroom of course. I'm not too worried if I do. Go into those spots because I can always correct that later on. Now this is interesting. I just noticed that once I've wet the paper, obviously this seems the ink seems to spread a bit easier. So that may be something going forward. I say may because I don't really know at the moment. There we are. That'll do. I'll leave that to dry before I come back to do the spots and then these are really getting past their best so that's for sure. I did try things like ink tense pencils here. Um, on this paper and they really it, it, everything just grabs to the paper the paper just grabs hold of them and uh, but I've, I've tried to put in things like watercolor paper and mixed media paper and so on through my printer previously and the laser print laser printer just, it just doesn't stick okay dogs I quite like that color it's not you know, it's a purple, and I think it might look rather nice just here, because that will help to tie this together. And I may also use it just for some of the stripes on the flower pot for this mushroom, because I think that would look quite sweet. Okay, I'm going to need a little bit more. Past me wonders whether it's because I keep them with a brush pen up. The brush, brush nib upwards so I can see the colour. So I might actually turn them all upside down once I've finished and see what effect that has. That's a bit better. And I really need it very dark over here and here. A shadow. Got to think about your shadows. Looks really nice. Just perhaps a little bit just over there. I hear somebody's car alarm going off. I don't know if it, the microphone picks that up. Okay, righty ho. All right then. I'm getting all lovely little patches of colour here. I'm eventually going to run out of space on this, which means not before I finish this, I wouldn't think. Okay, let's have a look here. 
a nice peachy colour would be quite nice there. I'm going to fall foul of my usual rules of just um, limited colour palettes, aren't I? Oh yeah, that's a different kind of peachy colour. I should keep that one out because we're going to do some stripes. Because, well, why not? And then this one will make some shadows in there. That'd be nice. And, um, while it's damp, I can just pop some more shadows in like that, which is really quite good. Okie dokes. It's learning how to work with media and trying different things out and seeing what works. So by working this way, I can get those darker areas like that. So that's quite nice. Okie dokes, right, I've got them, them there. Next job is for the mushroom. Uh, this will be quite nice actually. What I'll do is for this one is I'm going to pop my shadows in first. I'm not going to worry about the red that spilled over into these little white areas because what I'm going to do anyway is these are going to be I'm going to use that um, beigey colour to colour the the stems but by putting the shadow in first that line stays quite dark because it grabs to this paper. I sound moany don't I? I don't mean to be but it's just the um it's just the way that these the you know the media is working with the paper and I'm not familiar with how it's working and it's vexing me just a tad. But it'll be okay can't really soften the lines, that's the biggest issue I have. Okie dokes. I want, what colour do I want to go with that purple? Don't think I really have a lime green here because that would be my first choice. Um, let me have a look. What about a nice bright pink? Mm, not so keen on that one. Let's try this one. Oh yeah, that'll work nicely, I think. I'll mix it with the other one because I doubt I'll use the other one on its own. Let's have a look. Again, because this isn't sort of like paper that's been treated, it's filling up with water quite quickly. But I can live with that, to be honest with you. It'll be fine in the grand scheme of things at the end. So that works nicely. And then just for a bit of a change, let me have a look. I like this blue. So I'm going to use the blue, that blue there, for the stripes on the um, pot. So I just think it'll be quite nice there. So it's working. Hopefully I'm not getting my big head in the way. Okay, I've got this red out, so that'll be quite nice for the that heart. Just layering the colour up to intensify the contrast a bit. And it's also a nice colour to go with these green leaves here, I think. So by using the colours I've got on my palette in some ways, I'm, I'm already making choices about um, colours and it's a really soft, gentle, um, sorry about the squeaks. Sticky pens. 
what I can do here is give that there and that gives it that highlight. Okie dokes. Um, this one here, I think I might go with this strange greenish colour. I'm going to try and fade it out to the edge, but I will just put a darker shadow around the edges and of course this side I will make that shadow that little bit more and to one side and underneath the heart just to make the heart seem like it's sticking out that little bit and um, the ribbon there so that'll work. Okie dokes, I now need a lovely yellow, um, a golden yellow would be lovely. The problem with Tombos is sometimes I can't work out what colour is which from the lids because they, some are so similar, it's ridiculous. That's the, we have golden, orangey yellow stars I think. And while I've got this colour I may as well do all of these up here. those stars done but it's all my little dots as well oh the bird's got starry knees I can live with that and I've got some rather unusually yep yeah, I've got things that aren't connected where was the other weird thing I thought oh that needs sorting there there and there That'll work fine, I think. Okay, and to keep that theme of yellowish going, let's have some yellow stripes over here. And with that yellow, I can't use blue. Green. I could use the blue, but I need a different blue. Oh gosh, that's one that has a lid that just hasn't been on. Has that dried out? Bizarrely not. I'll tell you, there's no rhyme and reason. This is a more muted blue, so it should look a bit different to the other one that's there. So that's okay. And then for this starry one, I want to, ooh, which blue do I want? I'll try this one, because this one looks to be oh, that's a lush blue. I don't know if you can see. So we're losing my palette, you're losing me. Everything here. That is a lovely blue, and I think it will look fabulously here, won't it? Have stars on a blue sky. Well, basically, it's because orange and yellow, yellowy oranges, are opposite blues on the colour wheel, and to have them next door to each other, it does tend to increase their vibrance. Okie dokes. Um, I've got this flower to do. And I think I'm going to choose the red. So I'm not careful, I'm going to end up with... And I think I might just add a hint of pink at the bottom because while they're damp, they should blend nicely. They do. There we go. So limited colour palettes don't necessarily mean limited choices in colour because you can mix the colours. Okie dokes, right. This bird needs a bright yellow beak and I think I'm going to give him or her him because usually in the plant in the animal world plant world in the bird world um, it's the males that wear bright colors and show off to attract females and um, we have hints of 
that red in there to make, make a slightly more orangey colour there. That works. And I'm going to use that lighter blue to begin with. Just to colour the rest of him in. But I'm going to come back with a darker blue. Not the mute, the muted grey one, but the other one. Just to add some brightness of colour and a sense of shadow, I suppose. We are. I don't want it too um, too dark blue because obviously I've got the background to do, so I want the birds to stand out. So that means I'm rethinking what I'm doing, sort of on the fly. But if I add some of this pink, it will turn this to a lovely, hopefully, purpley colour. Of course it will. And that looks mottled and strange and I can live with that. Okay, bunting next. Well, I've used red, so let's get some of this, these bits in red, because I can. Um, and I'm not repeating patterns along here, I'm just going to go with the flow and um, see what happens here. What colours go next to each other. That'd be alright there, I think. Okay, we have some of that bright pink there, can go in there, I think. Um, and with the blue, some blue there, add blue there. I do want some green. We have a nice green out, so I'll make use of the ones I've got. So that'll be okay and let's have a look here that's a slip mucky green but i'm going with it because it ties in with everything else not the colors i'd normally use and for the um the string that they're attached to i'll use yellow but again i'm going to add a little bit of red to create an orange just for the ends Okie dokes. Now then, some more yellows because I want to give this a frame and my favourite colours, or sort of like it's one of those things that I do, is that when it comes to frames, I do tend use an orange here and what I'm intending to do with this one is I'm going to leave the border on the outside um, and coloured because I think I'm going to I say I think I know I'm going to trim um, take this bit out because I want to mount this on an ATC card which I'll have coloured with Distress Ink, which I'll show you what I'm doing, and create a, a greeting card from it. So I'm getting there. Okay, so I'm going to need lots of blues now for my sky. So I'm going to keep that one. The other two can go away because that's a bit darker. Um, Let's have a purple purple, it's a nice dark purple there. And I'll want a paler blue. Let's have a look, that one should be... That's a paler blue as well. So we've got a nice range of colours then. Yeah, I have got purple out because I like purple in the sky. And also it's it will help to separate some of the colours out somewhere. So let's have a look. And of course, if it's too purple, all I need to do is just pick some blue up. And I will mix colours while I'm doing this as well. I 
and I did, I'm so glad I did this because I know bad choice of colour that blue there for the um, the bunting it's okay because I will change this in my I'll pick some of that purple up and add the purple in there because it will be darker and the blue in the bunting will then show up more that's better so all works out eventually it does of course i can use paler versions of the same colors just by adding more water and i'm just allowing them to fade out as they they wish really this paper is so thirsty it just means that it just soaks the water up almost straight away I have to be careful around here because of these colours um, didn't think this out very well but it's okay oh gosh now I've got a strange coloured star there it's okay because this is where different blues will come in and purples will come in quite nicely I think because that looks quite similar to that little blue part but if I put some purple in it just the blue becomes a much deeper color and it's just different to the blue there and there so it works everything works out eventually okie dokes let me have a look that's not exactly a very different color to the section above but it's fine oh gosh okay come on that's better put a drop of water on my um the ferrule of the brush the ferrule is the metal bit um, that covers the hairs and join you know makes that seal to the handle of the brush the wooden handle you find ferrules elsewhere ferrules ferrules i'm not entirely sure it's a word i've actually said i've heard it said but i don't think i've actually used it myself <laughs> it's weird like that cause, you know I know that in the part, you know, I often mispronounce words because um, well, I have done because I've learnt them through reading. And it's only when you hear somebody speak them, you go, oh, that's how it's said, is it? <laughs> Just go, OK, the go me. But um, it always works out just fine and well in the end. I could have split that bit up above the bird's head, but it's okay as it is. Okay. I'm using the different blues around here is um it does make for an interesting background. It's a very busy background, but the blues all tie together. I do have a bit of a thing for stained glass, it does have to be said. I do I like nice stained glass windows in church or abbey or wherever I visit. Especially if the sun is shining through. And you get these beautiful rainbow patterns on the floor, and if you're lucky, the colours will spill to an area where you can sit and bathe in the colours. And I find that a delightful way to spend a bit of time, just seeing all these different colours playing on my hands or clothing and around me. I'd say it's quite magical in its way. I suppose it is. Okay, not happy with purple next to red. The greens are really scuzzy, but hey ho, they are what they are, and I'll work with them like I do everything. 
This is not a masterpiece of colouring. As you know, I much prefer to add colour digitally and you may see on my blog um, examples that I did digitally or maybe not. I don't know what I'm going to do today yet. I do know that I need to get my backside out and for a walk, especially as I splurged and got some Bluetooth um, earphones so that I can um, listen to music without a wire getting in my way. And also, um, I like to listen to music when I'm cooking, for example, which I don't do enough of. Um, but being able to put earphones in and sing and dance as I cook is lovely. It's not that I don't have speakers and things in the house, it's just that they're all connected to computers which are in specific places and none are close to the kitchen for me to listen to. And um, I have got Bluetooth head, you know, headphones, um, but I don't like wearing them, they make the inside of my ears sweat. And also, when they're tied, tethered or paired, it's the word I'm looking for, paired with any of my computers, um, they have to be really close because I live in a, a, a house that has walls built of stone. And um, my Wi-Fi signal is really good, but the Bluetooth pairing isn't so good, it seems. Which is fine. Again, it is what it is and, you know, you can work with it and use it however... I'd like to use it, I suppose, which is fine. Nearly there. As you can tell, I'm really not being terribly careful. I'm going to have a little bit of purple in there just to darken that bit. Nearly done, just the last couple of bits. Ooh, let's have a look. I've almost lost the birds in the background here, which I'm not too happy about. But again, there are things I can do to help it stand out, one of which is darkening all the colour around it, which does help somewhat. Even with purple, because it's so much darker than the bird itself, actually work to help somewhat. Let's get some under here I think along with some of that darker blue. It's quite interesting as I'm working with this seeing how the colour spread in the in the damp card because um, the card does get quite damp it does soak up a lot of water which means then it stays wet for longer, obviously, but, um, but when I add colour I can actually see it being added into, or spreading in those um, areas. Last little bit to be done. There we go. A little bit there. Just checking through. So if this isn't the best colouring in the world, it's probably not the best choice of colours. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a quick tidy up. I'm going to stop the video for a moment, which you won't even notice, Miss Probably, except I'm saying that. And then I'm going to come back ready to turn this, hopefully, 
into a card or an ATC card. I'm going to come back and do a couple of things, but I need to clear the decks and get some other stuff out. And so I'll be back in a moment. Well, hello there. And I'm back and I've sorted some bits out. And this is the card, um, the ATC card I've coloured in. And I'm debating whether to leave this as it is or whether I'm going to trim it out. But while I'm deciding, I'm just going to add some gold to these little stars because I like a bit of glitter and glitz and I know other people do and I could colour the stars in because there's not many of them but I think what I'm going to do on here is add some gold like that that looks quite nice and then I want to add some pattern texture uh, with um, other things so I've dug out um, a souffle, souffle, my souffle pens for a moment because I'm thinking that these might actually work quite nicely to add some colour to the leaves some little dots because I like dots dots are good but also particularly with the, the cacti here because they are just basically one colour, which isn't very interesting. But if I add dots into the sections, perhaps it will help to bring something interesting out. Now these souffle pens do take a while to dry. When they dry, they dry quite opaque and with a slightly raised finish. Well, that's that's kind of the plan. So I've got those. The other, another pen I've got here is I've got a clear glaze pen. And if I can get this to work. Yeah, there we go. Hopefully, is it clean? Not yet, no. Let's just give it a clean. So they do get a bit gummed up and they do need that bit of a, a clean. That's better. Because this one will give a nice shiny finish to, to what's underneath. And I'll just make it quite plain and clear here. I um, should have done right at the beginning of the video, but there'll be a note in the description that says um, I'm not sponsored, I'm not gifted any of these products. These are ones that I just use. I've bought them with my own money. I'm not promoting them in any kind of way. I'm just showing them because this is what I tend to use. <laughs> Okie doke. So we've got, there's some subtle shine on the mushroom cap and the beacon knees of the bird and I want some highlights now on mushrooms and things so I'm digging out this is a white souffle pen just check it, it's going to work for me again it needs to be um, just the tips just cleaned off really so what I'm going to do is put some dots where there would be a highlight area which would be quite nice I think and where else was I going to pop those oh yeah On the pots just to bring out a sense of highlight. I could use lines but I'm really really rubbish with lines and these pens. Plenty on that one. There we go. 
that look nice. Um, my stars do need a bit of brightness and I'm looking at this yellowy green. It does look really green there. But I have got a green green. Let's have a look. I've got a green green. I'm not going to use it. Um, it's just deciding now if there's anything else I want to add here. That poor bird of mine. I don't have a clear star pen with me, which would be the perfect thing. Because there's um oh we have a look, quick look in my pen box. Didn't think see if I can find that clear star quickly. Yeah, genius. The clear star is glitter, very, very faint, fine glitter, but it's clear, so it should, in theory. I've just disposed of bits and bobs, haven't I? Yeah, I'd hoped I'd have. Oh, I've got some paper here that's got some. Yeah, the colour shows through underneath. I just want to check that before I wreck everything completely. So I think a starry bird would be quite nice. This is going to work. It may not because it's quite old as well. Oh, shoot. Oh no, there we go. Just dislodged whatever was in the way. And the lovely thing about these are. They really do. The glitter in them is so fine. It's absolutely lovely. It really is. The other things with these um, Sakura pens I found in the past is that if you take a damp brush to them while they're still moist, you can actually spread them out. So if you get, you know, like over here, I've got a clump of glitter. That is one sparkly bird. Look. Can you see? Catching the light. There we go. And I think I might do the same for the bunting, but, you know, I'm not going to dig out my brushes again. Um, do I want to do the same for the bunting? No. the stars yeah absolutely I think because they do look very dull in comparison to what stars should be it's really shiny there we go and so I've got some glitter some shine that helps the birds stand out a bit more and I think this flower here could do with a bit of this as well because it is lost in the background just a bit there we go so I'm just adding a little bit I could go to town with this this is my big problem I'm terrible once I start I don't stop but I do want my clear glaze pen because I darn well know that the glitter pen I used for these little spots here will rub off very easily and so I use, like to use a gl the glaze pen, the clear glaze, to seal that glitter in. And it also helps it to shine that a little bit more, I found. I have. So I'm just going to leave all of this to just do what it needs to do to dry it'll take a, a few minutes and while i'm doing that which i'll pop over there um i want to color there's a couple of things i want to do this this and i have i've trimmed it to the line mostly but i am really rubbish at using scissors and when i say rubbish i mean absolutely rubbish at them and there's a couple of ways of dealing with this where you've got little bits of white. One way is to take a black brush pen or um, marker 
so I'm just going to shift myself again I don't think things through all that well generally but I have my moments I am known to have my moments just not many of them okie dokes oh. do you think I can see a black pen here anywhere no I haven't got a, a black brush pen to hand or have I I got very dark grey, which almost probably do. So I can take something like I've got um, a very dark pit artist pen here and just go along the edge with the brush, and it helps to disguise to disguise any white that's maybe peering out, and also it it adds its colours. The edge of the card and it seems to finish it off really nicely it gives that nice finish kind of feel to it and you see it doesn't take very long just take that that way and that there and there I don't, I don't know if you can see what's happening but I have where you'd see white on the edge of the card, it's now all well, very dark grey, almost black. So that's really nice. Now if I'm going to mount this on here, I'd quite like this to have a coloured background. You can see here where this is that little bit thinner. I can just take this and just add a bit of a line there. Anywhere else? Oh, there's still a bit of white showing there. Should be fine. But I want to colour the background. I was going to do blues, but I think I was thinking of that one for blues. So instead, I'm going to use this and I'm going to use Distress Inks to add some colour to this card. Now, as I'm going to mount this, I don't need to do all of it. I just need to do the outside edges, really. Oh. This was a mucky piece of <laughs> foam. It's got green on it by the looks of it, but that is perfect actually, because um, I get this lovely kind of very distressed, very mucky kind of finish, which is one of the things I do like. I've done that. And if I pop this on now, See how it gives it that nice edge, the board around it. And again with this, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to take, yeah, I think I'll take something as dark as ground espresso. That first one was rusty hinge. And what I'm doing is I'm just adding it to the edge of the, the card and perhaps just coming on to the edge just a little bit. Um, and it's just a subtle difference it just finishes it off in a lovely lovely kind of way and let's clean off some of this okay I, I could you know I may very well once this is completely dried look how sparkly that is oh gosh I don't know if you can see really sparkly. Cameras never pick sparkle up very well. But this one. So what I can do before I add colour to this is I'm going to use, hope, well I say hopefully a clean piece of foam. Sorry um, my voice will fade because I'm getting things. Here I've got a um, some stamp cleaner and a and the cleaning pad so I can clean that piece of foam up. This is just cut and dry foam which comes from Ranger, other com companies you can get. Just drying it off there just to get the, um, see the colour it's picked up from the, the pad which will need colouring. Now I could do use Rusty Hinge which I may do around the edges but just to add some colour to this 
this is tea dye and um, because this paper is so grabby with colour, so soaks it up so much, I've um, it's, it's taken in a lot more than I would have expected to be honest, but it's fine. And just a hint of that. I'll let that dry for a moment as well because a bit of drying is good. Now then this one couple of things I could do. I could very carefully try to colour around the edge with Distress Ink. I could. The alternative is I can go right let's crop this back. Which I could do. How much smaller is it than a card? This is the question. It is a teeny 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 tiny bit smaller than a card would be. Yeah, what do you think? What the heck? Thing is, if I don't, if I make a complete mess, then it really doesn't matter because I'll have learnt something. Yeah, it has dried. And what I've learnt is, Angela, don't give up on your crafty ideas. Stick to fine art. I have dabbled with card making in the past and mixed media and all sorts and it always looks to be a brilliant thing to do but when I try it everything goes to pot. I, yeah, I pref yeah, that's going to mount nicely on there. So colours. I want something that's quite dark but I also want something that isn't quite so dark. So let me have a look. I need to clean this a little bit. But again, if it's a bit mucky, I'm not going to stress out about it because that change in colour, the variations in colour is going to be lovely. It's that distress grunginess that I like. This is Broken China if you're interested in knowing what this one is. And with a hint of tea dye on edge, because why not? And then the other one I want to use, I think, is chip sapphire just a little bit round the edges just a little bit just to darken it in places and it gives it a framing it frames it really quite nicely let's have a look that could go in perhaps a little bit more from the edge I'm not looking for perfection in the colour. The name is, you know, the idea is in the name. Now that sits, that looks a lot better. So what I'm going to do here is, as I've done with the other one, is use that ink here just to colour in the white paper. I don't know if you can see the edge is white there. Stroke it down and it goes to that blue colour. Just check it's all the way around. Yeah, I haven't missed a bit. And I'm going to do exactly the same with this. Because I have got some white bits. I am a nightmare with scissors. I'm left-handed with scissors. Um, I'm right, I'm left-handed or I can be a bit ambidextrous with things like knives and spoons and forks and other things, you know, I'm equally bad at sports with either hand, you know, from days when they forced me to play things like badminton and tennis in school, I was just as bad left-handedly as I was right-handedly, so perfectly ambidextrous. Um, me and sports have never got on. Coordination, it's not my thing. But um, I think that one looked really quite nice. I think so. So there's that. This one... I'm not going to do it now, but I may show you in a, a you know in a while you know in another day. I will add colour to this somehow, and I'll use fairly monochrome or a limited colour palette and bring this out um, 
and the eaves are you know quite vibrant colours because of the background but I think that'll work nicely but I'm going to complete these now if I if I was an expert craftsperson I could cut a mat to put underneath then another mat you know and lift it up and have another edge around it and the same with this one but I'm not and in fact as I'm looking at this one I used very similar colours for the top and the knot top the top and the knot top yeah I did just yeah so I think I want to darken this up and I think I may go I may because this is one of my most favorite distress ink colors which is and I'm getting a purplish color here because of the I picked the foam up that's still got some of the chip sapphire on but that is lovely it actually oh that is something for me to remember I won't but I can hope perhaps I will one day that was a genius move that was I now know how to make autumnal purples there we go I'm getting increasingly muckier here that will work nicely I think just give it a couple of minutes just to, oh, a little while to dry I'm going and I also could use um, so I'm sure I've still got some in my stash either little foam squares or insulation foam craft foam sticky double-sided craft foam to lift this up no because I don't it looks great you think it's a great idea but from the side you can always see the foam so <laughs> I, I'd prefer to use cut you know layers of card if I was going to do that but I'm not I'm keeping it simple because I'm not an expert crafter by a long shot but that's I just want to give you an idea of what you could do with these right I'm going to turn it over that way so I don't smudge stuff good how do I know past experience <laughs> and this glue is fab but it can take take it doesn't take long to dry and it's really strong but it's you know you need to get it pressed down and there there's one I haven't finished I'm warning you I haven't finished with that one because there is something I want to do to it and if you know me you may know what it is and I am keeping it going to keep it as simple as I can today this is a, called a three-in-one glue and um, it's solvent based so it is a bit stinky but it dries really quickly and it's it's well permanent and um, this one's a beacon brand and I prefer it to glue sticks or matte medium oh don't give me matte medium it will go everywhere it's not supposed to whereas this works really nicely and it does dry really quickly so there we are I've got two of those I'll put the, that there they actually they look finished but but there's always a but with me these days, isn't there? Where have I popped it? But there. I've got my glitter pen here. Okay, and what I'm going to do, this is really simple. I'm going to run it along the edge. And use the edge of the card because it sticks up enough. To run my pen along to add a glittery border and I could do this with any pen any color any kinds I wish there were metallic souffle pens because they would be fab for this they would you get a little raised bead as well at the end of it glazed pens would work really nicely um, I've got a, I've got black glaze I have got colored glaze pens somewhere in my stash but whether they are still functional because I haven't used them for quite a number of years and these are the kinds of pens that need to be oh, nice thing about this pen is that when it's still wet you can just brush it off oops um, I've done the first couple of sides wonderfully and now 
And the trick to using these is not to use too much pressure. And I find it really helpful to go back and forth. And because I'm using the side of this like a ruler, I'm getting exactly the same thickness of line. And then I've got this lovely gold sparkly board around it, which I think looks really quite nice. Now for the other one, I made a purchase the other day. I did. And because I'm into vintage colours more than anything else, I've seen these quite often and they are um, they're souffle pens. Um, not souffle, they're moonlight, jelly roll moonlight pens. And they're in lovely vintagey, earthy, duller colours than they would be. They are gel pens. I tried them. They sort of resist water to a degree on paper, but not hugely enough that I could use them for drawing with, which is such a shame because that would be my ideal thing. Uh, but they're actually finer than other, you know, they're 06, which means the line they produce is, um, I think it's 0.35 millimetres, which is brilliant for drawing. So maybe that I'll use these for drawing with as well and scanning in. And again, like in most gel pens, you need a lighter hand means that the ink rolls or comes out a lot easier. So I am adding just a, a border with this light one round here. The problem is, is they're water-based and distress inks are water-based colour tends to pick up, and odd, but oddly, the colour that you see on the lid, it's not as light as it appears. Well, I know some of the moonlight pens will actually um, glow under black light, under UV light. I don't know if these do. I'm going to have to see if I've still got the my fobby thing that will, that has black light in it somewhere. I'm not sure that doesn't really show up, which is a shame because I was hoping to keep it fairly dull and neutral. But I think I may have to go and have a look here and see if I've got a. I have actually. This will work better. Can you see? It's all a matter of trial and error. And whatever you do can be sorted out. This is a metallic jelly roll and it's this lovely rich red colour which will actually work nicely with this, I think. Well actually it works really nicely on the with the distress inks as well. Because it's a sort of purpley red, I suppose, a maroon or a burgundyish colour. I do have to say that Sakura pens are fabulous. Um, the Microns, the Pigma Micron pens, aren't necessarily aren't my favourite fine liner pens to draw with. Um, but I haven't really got a favourite. <laughs> it's one of many, so I'll use whatever's available as long as they're waterproof. If I'm going to be adding colour and archival, if I need to keep them, but you can see it's just a subtle sparkly line there. So these are now, as far as I'm concerned, done. Now there's a couple of things I can do. One is leave them as they are. And they, oh gosh, there's pens everywhere. That's all right, I'll pick them up in a moment. Um, in a, With an ATC on the back, you fill in dates, details of um, the media you've used, um, who who coloured it and in this case who created the art because this is obviously by me and um, you know any other information you might need to put on there and ATC cards then are shared with other collectors you share them you swap them with people so you share your little bits of art and craft with others um, and these are you know they they're still popular now. They're not meant to be sold, though some people do sell them. Um, but I do have to say, if you're using my art, you can't do that. There's no angel policy with anything I create unless it's bought via 
Etsy. So I do have some designs on Etsy, some stamp designs that do have an angel policy with them, but not colouring books, book sheets or pages. Um, because I, I provide these for you free. And when I provide something free, I don't think it's fair that other people should make money from it if I'm not. Um, it's just the way of the world, you know. Um, so what I could do is these I can mount on a card. I'm trying to work around which way I would like this. Um, I like it that way, but it's it doesn't sit nicely. It needs to be this way, so it would need to be a top, you know, um, a top folded card, which is great. And this one definitely would be. I need need that edge round. So let me affix these. This is where things go weirdly wrong. Because I am rubbish at positioning <laughs> things on cards. Oh, wonky eyes, wonky me. That one's not too bad, so let me just pop that over and just press it down until the glue fixes itself. Well, that's not too bad. Ah. And I've done this in the past where it's been so bad, I've cut this off the card and then <laughs> affixed it to another card. So I've got a double thickness, you know, trimmed it back or left a, an edge around it. Use my paper trimmer the best I can. And I know there are people who use things like cutting mats and rulers and goodness knows what. I just think, well, if it's good enough, it will do. Right. That will have to do because the glue is now sticking. So I'll just do that. This is where I could have kept or should have kept the pens out because I could add another border around them. So let's have a look. Spot the pens. There we go. So I've got the glittery one here. So again, it's just a matter of going carefully around the edge. This is what I like to do. Um, I just think it just adds that little bit of something and of course if I wanted to then I could actually go crazy on this and create all entangled patterns or extend the design to the rest of the page this is almost like you know a little little window into it or you know something would be quite nice actually would be to dry your cacti and leaves and um, patterns made from the shapes of bunting all over the place. Oh my god, I can't believe I did that. I can actually believe that I managed to get pens everywhere. So, oh gosh. This happens, I, I start to get so confident and cocky in what I'm doing. I think, yeah, this works, and I go too fast, and weird things happen at corners because I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. So, but again, they're handmade. And handmade means, well, there's going to be imperfections there because as humans, we are um, imperfect beings. Um, as much as some people might think they're perfect, we're not. And um, have the you know the imperfections. I also could have spent time um, coloring, adding color to these cards with distress inks, or creating a panel to go on with distress inks. So you've got those, or creating um, a panel with patterns on, and perhaps just you know. All kinds of things I could have done behind this, but I've kept it relatively simple. Um, these cards are made are A5 in size, which means if you take a 
piece of letter sized paper or A4 paper and cut it in half and fold it, cut it in half. So if this was the paper I was going to turn into a card or card into a card into cards, cut it half this way and then fold it. So you end up with a piece that size and then you you fold it in the middle like this and you get that size. If you want, this isn't quite A4, but you could also cut it this way and then fold it that way and you'd get um, a fold on the narrower edge of the card. These are the wider edge. It just depends what you want to do. And it's that easy. These are pre-bought ones because I have trouble cutting. I can use a cutter and get things that are not. I use it perfectly and things still come out wobbly with me. So it's just, I'm just, I'm just cursed <laughs> with, with crafting, I think. So I've got these two cards. Obviously, this one isn't quite finished. It could be, but it's not. because I will add some shadow and shading and other things, no doubt, to it. But I hope you've enjoyed this. I said at the end of the last video I'd add them together, but we're going to have a video. Well, perhaps I will. It's about, it's, the video will be about an hour and a half, if not a bit longer. Um, but I may, may do... I'm not going to try and edit. I can't get my head around editing videos. It does not compute. But um, either way, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it'll give you ideas for the colouring template. Obviously, there are loads of ways of using this. These, um, you know, greeting cards are, are great fun, or note cards. Um, and if you'd like more of these, then just leave a comment and I'll certainly do that. I've got six other designs here I could turn into cards and I can endlessly print them out. Um, as I say, there's no angel policy with my um, cards, but if you want to use them for ATCs to, to just swap or you want to use them for greeting cards, that's fine. If you want to use them for book plates, you know, sort of like Mount these on a piece of paper for to go inside a book, that's fine, as long as it's being gifted and not sold. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've enjoyed seeing what you can do with um, the ATCs and everything. And I hope I'll see you back again. So enjoy yourself, take care, find time to be creative. And even when things don't seem to go right, persevere. I, you know, at the end of it all, this isn't too bad. Um, it's worked out okay. Um, yeah, my colour choices aren't brilliant, but I decided to use Tombow markers, which are great. But I didn't stop and think about the birds and the, the mushrooms and the background colour. Perhaps I should have done the background first. Lesson for the future, maybe. Um, this one I haven't completed, but it just gives you an idea. I'm waffling. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.